guys and welcome to the third episode of Software Explorer. Today I'm checking out Elementor, which is a free and open source WordPress plugin that essentially turns WordPress into a website builder. Now it's been over a year in development, it's got over 10,000 active downloads and it's got a 5 star rating on a WordPress plugin repository, so there's some positive signs here, I'm expecting good things. So, you know, the website tells us that, you know, you can reach a whole new level of design of Elementor, the most advanced drag and drop live page builder for WordPress, which is a bold claim. But nonetheless, down, further down the page, um, Elementor tells us that it's faster than others. Of course, there are many drag and drop builders uh, built for WordPress. Uh, apparently, Elementor is supposed to be extremely fast. It's free and open source, which is interesting. Um, um, I'd like to see how is it sort of third party development, you know, helps Elementor's growth. Easy to use, of course, and no coding. Um, further down, we learn that it can be used on any theme and on any page, which in and of itself is quite interesting because obviously WordPress has a huge array of themes. Many of them work in very unique ways. So, you know, I'll be looking forward to seeing how that works exactly. And the rest is just, you know, your general marketing spiel. Let's go back to the top and get started. Now, I already have Elementor installed on my website, so let's head over there and when it comes to creating a new page that's when you will see uh, the edit with elementor button there where the wordpress editor usually is and you can revert back to that if you wish using this button so i'm going to go ahead and click edit with elementor and this is the interface that i'm presented with which is pretty sleek pretty nice and as you can see i've got a blank page here with my element, Elementor elements ready to use and there's quite a few of them so let's see what I can do here now if I do scroll down here I've got my actual page section where I can add new sections or add a template uh, before I try to add a template option I'm going to go over to the elements here obviously this sidebar is where the main stuff is happening and I can take that away and it comes back out quite quite nicely very responsive, very fast. Um, let's just try some basic stuff out here. So drag and drop that into place. And that gives me a heading. Um, right, so it's not inline editing. I can't just click on, on that text there to edit it. Um, I have to come across to the sidebar and type there. Um, which isn't, you know, I would prefer some inline editing. But hey, it still works. You can add a link in there. Um, you can change the size of the font, which is pretty good. You can make it header 1, header 2, header 3. And there's also alignment options as well. You know, some basic stuff. Um, at the top here, we've got some styling. So you can change the text color, typography. Um, right, some advanced, some fairly advanced options here in terms of like typography, weight, and uppercase right lowercase only capitalize line height letter spacing you know that's fairly I like that it's pretty cool that's pretty cool uh, if I go across to advanced we've got margins here you can increase the margin you can see that moving across my page as I increase that margin padding similarly moving around the page entrance animation so I can do a fade in Right, interesting again. You can do some animations here. There's quite a few, to be fair. Sliding down and sliding across and bouncing even. Light speed in, okay. You know, m most people will find this kind of stuff tacky, and rightly so, but it can come in handy at some stage, possibly. Nice to have the option. CSS classes can go in there. Backgrounds and borders. There's border radiuses. Uh, that's minus I've gone for. Border type solid. There you go. Um, don't like that. Box shadows. Okay. Responsive options. Hide on desktop. Right, that, this is interesting. You can hide hide some elements on desktops and on top tablets and on mobiles. So that's pretty cool. I like that as well. Okay. So, some relatively advanced options there for just a simple text element. I've saved that. And just click anywhere to go back to the Elements tab. 
Let's check out an image. Drag that in. Hmm. Got to be very specific on where you drop it. I mean, there won't work. I can do it above, above and below that. There won't work. There won't work. It's quite specific where you've got to drag that. I mean, really isn't much give there, which is an issue for me. But there you go. So my image, again, you can't sort of, you can't really click anything here to to edit. It's not in line. And even these buttons here don't actually seem to work other than just dragging and dropping it around. There's a, there's a pencil icon there and duplicate. All right, the duplication thing works. The delete button works. The edit button, it does open. It just basically just opens up this this section here, which is fair enough. Um, you can just bring in images from your media library or upload. You know, that works works quite well. Alignment again. You can give your image a caption and a link. Styling. Again, got your sizing options. You've got opacity. Which is interesting hover animation I like that okay that's pretty cool a hover animation right again some of them are going to be tacky some of them are going to be useful border type you can have some borders in there if you wish uh, box shadows again again fairly advanced stuff there and I haven't even got the advanced tab advanced tab yet so again margins and padding are all here entrance animations again fade in from left yep it's all working quite nicely and quite quickly as well css classes backgrounds and borders and again responsive stuff you can choose to show or hide them on desktops tablets and mobiles click save again so far so good let's go back to the menu now as you can see there are tons of elements literally um I can't go through all of these elements. I imagine they work very similarly to the um, text element and the image element. Let's get out of that. Uh, there are columns, buttons I can insert. Let's try that one out again. The drag and drop system is not not great. It does it does work, but it's just a little bit weird. Um, yeah, they, they will have relatively the same. This content style and advanced tabs, and they will have about the same um, settings in there that you can configure. So, I'll just quickly run through the elements that are available. You've got a text edit, you know, there's columns, a text editor, a heading, dividers, spaces. Quite similar there, but you know, image boxes, Google Maps icons, icon boxes, image galleries, icon lists, counters progress bars, testimonials, tabs, accordions, sidebars, sound cloud, short codes, menu anchors, social icons, and, and many more that I didn't talk about. Also further down here at the bottom, these are actually my WordPress widgets that I've got installed. So you've got the the basic you know pages, calendars, archives, me meter, search and text, categories, and also further down I've got stuff like Ninja Forms, which I've got installed on this website. So I put that in there. This is actually just a WordPress widget. So, you know, Elementor kind of doubles as a, a widget manager too, in a sense. Well, we're about to find out if that's the case, actually. I can display using nin this Ninja Forms I'm using here, popular contact form plugin. Um, it hasn't seemed to work. I don't think that worked. No, I don't think so. Oh, no, it has. There you go. So it has. I was able to import a ninja form as a widget, put it into the page, and I can move that around too. So that's pretty cool. I like that. So there, you know, you can also search for the, for the widgets. Yep, you can search in there uh, and, the, and the elements. So there's quite, you know, it's quite a diverse range of elements there, really. They've done pretty well, and, and the settings, as I showed you with the headers and the, the image, they're quite quite advanced, and they're pretty cool. So let's go down here to the Add New Section button. Now here you can set the structure of your page. So I can have a full width page, which I currently have. I can split it into two, three, four, and so forth. I can have a sidebar, two sidebars. So for example, let's go for these two sidebars here. As you can see, that sets me up with a 
one sidebar, a second sidebar, and a main content area. And I can just fill those widgets, at, you know, just as I did up here. I can drag and drop those into place, can I? Not existing ones, I don't think. But I can put that in there, so I can have a button there. And I can have a video in there. I have to add a video in. Yep, there you go. And I can have a icon in that third one. So, you know, again, there's a few possibilities there, a few different options. And uh, you can just fill each section with um, widgets and elements from the sidebar. Again, it works quite well. You know, you can add things on top of each other too. You can swap them around. It seems to work quite nicely. There you go. The drag and drop editor does work, it's just a little bit fiddly at times, you really have to be quite precise. Um, especially if you're coming in off the sidebar. But not to worry, not a big deal. Let's go back to the add template. Now this should be interesting. Um, essentially what this allows you to do is, um, you know, override your entire theme, apparently. Um, let's see how this works. You can go for this one, insert that one. This will be interesting. Right. Um, yeah, as you can see, it sort of inserts a, a brand new design inside your page. Gives you a banner, you know, some some text to work with, icons, um, maps. So yeah, it's just a pretty cool template, really. And they have they have just used um, elements and and uh, widgets from the sidebar that you could have done yourself. So it doesn't necessarily override your page or anything. It's still within the page. It just gives you a nice little foundation to work off of and I quite think I think that's pretty cool that worked out better than I expected actually not bad Elementor not bad at all and they've got you know a fairly decent amount of, of templates there free to use you can also create your own templates there I can imagine I'll check that in a second after I look at this second template yeah again it's all customizable it's not in line but you know, you do you do editing by the, on the sidebar there, and um, it's pretty cool. Must admit that that works a lot better than I thought it would. And my template, obviously, yeah, you just save a template. You can do that down here, which I'll look at in a second. And you can access and you can create one template and, and reuse it on, on multiple pages. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So the options down here. Let's go to the top here. Look at what I did. Here we go. Got some options here. Um, gives me a desktop pre preview, a tablet preview. There you go. So I can see what my website will look like on a tablet, and the same on mobile. Again, very very quick. And as you can see, what I did set up has has come out quite nicely. And the template is also looking quite good. No complaints there at all. Uh, there's a help button there. Take a tour. That brings up a two minute tour of Elementor. Pretty cool as well, not bad. Always handy. And what else was there? Go to the documentation, so that'll link me straight to the to Elementor's documentation off site. And here I've got a template library and, and save template. So I can save this template. You know, if I was looking to make a, a really horrid page and I wanted to save this template, then I could do that from there and duplicate that across my website. So there you go, that's the main that's the main um, meat of Elementor. I'm I'm quite impressed with it actually. The dra drag and drop builder isn't isn't as good as it should be, um, but I, I definitely like the way that um, you're able to sort of get really really advanced with the with the options here, the margins and the padding and the animations and the opacity when it comes to the images, the image animations. It's all pretty good, um, and for a free plugin. That's free and open source, by the way. Um, it's a big thumbs up from me. They do need to work on their drag and drop editor a little bit. Inline editing would really take it to the next level. I really think they need some inline editing going on. But other than that, I think they've done a good job. For a free plugin, I really cannot fault it. So, yeah, well done to the guys at Elementor. And on that note, I will wrap up this third episode of Software Explorer. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Thanks again for watching. I will see you next week for episode four.